what is it and what can we do with it? Wavelet tree is a query that operates with some given sequence. Let's say the sequence will be three, one, mm, two, five, seven, six, four, eight. Uh, seven and two, maybe like that. Now some numbers can be equal, and here I took size eight because it's a bit easier mm, for me. Actually, let's put two more numbers because there can be repetitions. One and two. Uh, instead of building a segment tree over the indices, so usually we, we split thing in the half. There will be a root responsible for the whole interval. Then here interval one to five, uh, six to ten, and so on. Instead, we do a segment tree over values. In the root, we, uh, the root represents the whole sequence: three, one, seven and so on, up to two. Then the left thing represents an interval of values from one to four, the right thing from five to eight. Generally, if values are from L to R, then we take the middle value, M, L plus R over two, and we split according to that thing. The Maybe with blue, I will denote the intervals of values. The root was one through eight, Then the left chart is 1 through 4, the right one is 5 through 8. This vertex represents a sequence. Uh, preserving the order, we take all the numbers that are smaller or equal 4. 3, 1, 2, 4, 1, 2. For the right one, we have 7, 5, Mm, six, eight, two, eight. No, two, no, uh, two is not here. And we continue doing that. We go to the left with values one and two only. One, two, one, two. Uh, three, four. Every time preserving the order. Five, six, seven, eight. And then one, one, two, two. Three, four, and also like single numbers here. Every leaf will just have multiple occurrences of the same value because leaf is responsible for interval of mm, values that is just one value. Here we have one, two, three, four, and here one, one, two, two, and so on. Uh, okay, so we split according to values, not indices, but still we preserve the order. What types of queries we want to answer with that? We uh, maybe first the the height of this tree will be log of alphabet size or the limit for values. If values are from 1 to billion, then this segment tree will have this size, uh, this height, and this will also be in complexity of our solution. And this is height of the tree. Mm, obviously, you don't want to have all vertices. If something doesn't exist, so if here instead of 3, 4, we just had 3, then you don't create the right child. This is a dynamic tree with pointers. Uh, okay, what type of queries do we want to handle? Mm, for example, it will be uh, given x l r count the number of occurrences of x of value x in interval l r interval of indices 
this is problem one then two what a stupid thing This is problem one, this is problem two. Mm, given KLR, find the k smallest number in interval LR. This means if you took interval from L to R, of numbers from L to R, and sort it, what is the k number? Can I now put brackets? Yes, I can and later we'll talk about more queries but we'll focus on these two and plus later there will be updates but updates add extra log in complexity with updates it will be log square or log of alphabet size or log of max value times log n right now we will only have log of a uh, we start with the first query count the number of occurrences of value x in some interval obviously we can change that just to interval 1 to r minus the number of occurrences in interval 1 l minus 1 so let's focus on this thing how to and we are solving query 1 mm -hmm. what do we do we start from the root and we know in the root we have some mm, index r up to some index a different color maybe up to some index r i want to find the number of occurrences of x let's say that x is mm, 2 say that x is 2 then we for sure should go to the left child because values up to 4 are in the left child. Uh, we go there and now how do we update new R? We don't want to use binary search for that because here we could store the sequence not only with values but also with indices then we can find where is R. Mm, or what here actually would be enough is to go to the left uh, to go to this leaf eventually and to binary search if we start their indices uh, to binary search the r which will give us log of n in complexity but for that also just for every number you could just store the indices where this number occurs but this tree is more powerful and to handle more complicated queries and also updates we will do something else we want to avoid binary search completely because this messes up other things in complexity later how to do it mm. for mm, let's make a new drawing for that for the initial sequence that was three one seven and so on uh, let me rewrite it five two six 4812 I split with middle value m is 4 then everything will be s smaller equal that or not so it will go to left child or not and let's write 1 everywhere where it's smaller equal m and let's com pre -com let's compute prefix sums of that 1 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 6. Uh, this is extra RI, say, B. Mm, extra RI, B. That tells us for every position what is the number of elements up to that position. For example, here. Uh, in this prefix, the number of elements that will go to the left child is 3. Mm, up to this position the number of elements that will go to the left child is 5 
Now, using that, we can in constant time move to a child, because if we want to count up to some position, say up to this R, mm, and the number of elements equal to 2, then we go to the left child and we say, for you, we are interested in values up to the fourth one, because there are four uh, values that want to the left child up to position R. So when moving from vertex to its left child, we change R, it becomes B of R, where RIB is RI from this vertex. Mm, uh, for every position, we know the number of things up to this position that will go to the left thing. To move to the right child, we know that the number of things that go to the right child is R minus B of R. That if the, the prefix size is R, the number of things to the left child, uh, so smaller or equal M is BR, then the remaining ones, R minus BR, will go to the right one. So here we do R is R minus B of R. This way we can keep track of, so RIB uh, allows us to quickly move from some position in this sequence to corresponding position in the mm, child sequence. If here we are up to R this one, so numbers that go to the left up to R are 3 and 1, then in the child we should be, R should be here. We should say up to this position count those values x. Uh, and this is, is what will give us complexity log of A. And now let's use it, let's use the same thing to handle the second type of query. Find the cave smallest, cave smallest element uh, smallest element in interval LR. Maybe element is a better word. Uh, this time we cannot subtract 1R minus 1L minus 1. Uh, okay, what do we do? Let's remember that mm, in normal segment trees, interval LR is split into logarithmically many intervals, what makes finding cave smallest element much harder we need to use extra binary search over the value. Here we will just have single log of A complexity. We will go in the segment tree from root to some leaf and that's it. How? Should I copy the tree? I don't need to. Mm. Find the cave smallest element interval like that. Okay, we have some vertex, initially the root, responsible for values from initially from 1 to some a, and we have m is equal a over 2. Uh, it has two children, mm, and we have here some sequence. This sequence, together with RIB, of uh, if L and R are this interval, we can ask the RIB for the number of elements in this interval that are smaller equal M. Uh, so this will be, let's say, CS, count smaller in this interval. This will be just B of this position minus B of that position. And if this is greater or equal k, go left, because the left child has k smallest element, because at least k numbers from this interval go to the left child. Otherwise, as uh, else, go right, but first C uh, first do k minus equal c s and then go right. Uh, why? Because if we already understand that there are five smaller elements 
that we left in the left child, and we are looking for the seventh smallest element, then in the right child, we are looking for second smallest element. And again, we have complexity o of log of max value. Mm. This time, we need to keep track of both L and R, but we use RIB to know in constant time to which position we go uh, in a child. We don't need any binary search. And that's the power of wavelet tree. Uh, regarding updates, mm, there, there are some very easy updates that we can handle. And this would be yes, what we can handle. We can handle this. Update given i, swap a of i with and a of i plus 1. This is something that we can do in log of 8 time still, uh, because Prefix sums will not change a lot. If we have, we, if we had sequence like three, seven, one, two, five, five, something, we swap five and two, and m was four. Then the information whether something is smaller equal m, so it goes to the left child. Uh, I will answer the memory question in a moment. Uh, this it was like that. 0, 0, and so on. So the prefix sums were uh, were what? 1, 1, 2, 3, 3, 3, and so on. After swapping, we will here have 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, and so on. And the prefix sums are 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, and so on. This is the only element that changed in RIB. So for every level, we just change one element. And then we move down. Uh, do we need to move down? No. After we swapped something in this node, and so one was swapped with zero, for the children, nothing changes. But first, we need to, from the root, that represents values say 1 to 8, if the swapped values, if we swap two neighboring values and they are say 7 and 8, then we need to go from here, to here nothing changes regarding the b. Then we need to go to a child, uh, well we, s we want to swap uh, 7 and 8 in a sequence for this vertex if we store that explicitly, but we go to the right child, it has values 5, 8, then to the right child, uh, 7, 8. And here something will change for sequence B. And then we don't go anymore to the left because nothing will change there. So we can handle this update in log of A. If update is more general, like swap any two vertices or just change some value, then we need to change this complexity into O of log n times log a uh, because now the array b can change a lot so this array of prefix values when we change one element so this changes from 1 to 0 and nothing else is changed then we add some we add plus 1 subtract plus 1 or subtract 1 for the whole suffix so now sequence b would be not just a sequence not an array it would be a segment tree or bit if we have general updates we have extra log n in complexity in all the operations because now also to ask for br we need log uh, the last thing is memory what memory do we have uh, there will be the number of leaves uh, is just limited by n there are that many leaves 
and each of them can have a path to the root. There will be some intersections between them, but still uh, the complexities and the memory complexity is that uh, vertices. There are two ways to get off n log n. One way is to first compress the values, and then values are from 1 to n. So this is after compressing, after compressing. Or uh, dynamic binary trees we can compress also in such a way that if vertex has only one child and the other one is empty, and this also has just one child, then we can compress this path into just one edge. Uh, after something like that, every vertex has exactly two children. And then if you have n leaves, you have two n vertices. But it's complicated and I don't see any usage of that, any use of that. Just If everything can be done offline, consider this thing. Compress the coordinates and make everything to be from 1 to n. Mm. If not, then n log a is the memory complexity. 